the three ghosts of Christmas past. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so this is like a video only, right? They don't, do they put uh -huh. it out? And I mean, this is fun. This, this image, like as a costumer, this like reads on many levels, right? Like, mm -hmm. so it says, it says, this is another writ heavy ritual thing. It could be ghost. It could be nun. It looks very religious to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, then when you get closer and you see the mask, it's a skull, it's bedazzled, it's, it also has a veil too, right, a, a, a studded veil. Um, in the image, in the video, they're floating, right? There's no feet underneath it, which I didn't remember until I rewatched the video the other day. I'm like, oh, right, That's they just float in. Yeah, so like when I saw the video picture of this mask, I immediately thought of this um, Damien Hirst for the love of God, which this is a sculpture. It's a this is a uh, encrusted in diamonds. I think like 1800 diamonds. This was like the most expensive piece of art that was ever made. And I think it sold for the most money. I think oh my gosh. that might've been broken recently, but I, I have to think that this is the inspiration because it feels like it has the exact same kind of similar. It does. Yeah. That, I mean, so like at, if you were like an art dork and knew this, I don't know if you had ever seen this piece of work mm -mm. before. At Can't say I have. Place. Like I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's Damien Hirst's like skull, right? <laughs> so um, I, I have to think that's the reference and it's a great, it's mm -hmm. a, and, and so this, that re the, the skull and this, um, they make me think of Memento Mori, which was traditional um, form of artwork that happened like, well, it happened quite a long time, but it's very popular during the Victorian era. And it was mm -hmm. Memento Mori translates to like, remember, you must die basically so mm -hmm. it's very victorian goth <laughs> mm -hmm. um it fits right in with the, a lot of the images that they use they use a lot of these kind of like images of death and yeah. images of rebirth and and so it i think it ties really nicely into um the their overarching mythology right and then yeah another great uh elegant design choice i thought it yes. looks and it looks badass it's, it's really like cool <laughs> It's really, really cool. And it, at the end of the video, um, you know, it all breaks apart and stuff and you can see yeah. the reflection of who, the face underneath it versus who it's supposed to be, which is a reflection of themselves, mm -hmm. which is what karate is about. It's just that whole entire imagery was just, just, it's an awesome yeah. slide. Um, so Tokyo Dome, um, also another big venue. Tokyo Dome in and of itself is actually a baseball stadium that is well inside. Um, has a huge dome over it. It's just, it's huge. Also another very popular uh, performance venue for for uh, artists. Um, also very difficult to actually get yourself set up in because of the shape of the, the studio. So what they did was they did a central tower uh, with a stage surrounding it and then the stage in and of itself like turned while they performed sometimes so they would like perform in different areas um, and then each uh, there was three different uh, elongated walk stage oh, I can't think like of the runway word. thank mm -hmm. you the runway um, that were kind of in the shape of a coffin which was really cool mm -hmm. um, and so this was the they did a two-nighter as well which each night having a completely different set list than the other one because they were playing from both of their albums baby metal and metal resistance um, the gold one which is the first time they've really have deviated from the red and from the red like uh, black and silver this yeah, yeah. um and then they went back to back to the red and black for the second night. Um, now with the first one though, once again, like I said, they make a lot of callbacks to a lot of their older stuff. With Sue's outfit on the first night, they have that triangle on the front piece, which is a callback to the outfit from um, the final chapter of Trilogy. Um, they did the same, same kind of design with that. And then um, with the second night, they have the feathers coming out of the shoulders again, which was a callback to Budokan. So like I said, they do a lot of the references in, in that. Um, actually, I think I put it on the next slide. If you go ahead and, and bop it over. Um, so for this, um, although I know they've done it technically before, but um, this one I know off the top of my head, they actually had their outfits on display um, it's very popular to do that at, there's a place called um, know, Tower Records. Um, they have special little like 
pictures and panels and outfits and sort of stuff about different band, bands and things. And Baby Metal did this a lot during this time. And they actually put those outfits on display um, for both nights. And so there were a lot of people who were able to get like really super up close pictures of, of the material types and, you know, what was, you know, how, how it looked up close. Yeah. It's great um, when bands do this that has, especially that have costumes because then or they put out really good promotional images so that people who are cosplaying can really like mm -hmm. make it accurate and it's in it's yes. in people's best it's in groups and film and whatever like it's in those people's best interest to put out that stuff because mm -hmm. it's it's free advertising it's it's good yes. goodwill with your fan base right so mm -hmm. um there, it's a it's a it's a, it's got to be intentional and it's it's also great because it shows off the artistry of the people that do this work right behind Which the scenes often exactly. go un, unnoticed you like wow that looks great and then you just move on but when you can mm -hmm. actually see it up close you're like wow that's a lot of work yes this um outfit was what they uh, they went on tour with the red hot chili peppers which sounds a little strange but it did happen. They went on tour with that. We had hot chili peppers. They also went on tour with corn and stone sour on a uh, LA tour, which is the first time they actually performed at the forum in LA. But this outfit specifically though, um, I made it. <laughs> and there's a lot of gemstones, a lot, a lot of gemstones on the front of, of Sue's outfit. There's a, there's a ton of them. And the thing is, is that it even has like an underlaying to it as well. It's just like, you look at it and you're like, oh, that's so pretty. It's so nice. But it's just the intricacies of their outfits are just, it's way up there. Yeah, um, this one's interesting because when they get into this variation, we're getting uh, like as a costumer, I'm reading this as a different kind of armor The the silver and the even just the way that the the undersleeve is coming out from that bodice is much more chainmail like mm -hmm. in its nature and the way that it hangs and drapes and visually that mm -hmm. silver mesh tool that's on top of that skirt reads sort of chainmail esque which is mm -hmm. pretty interesting. I, this this bodice I think I've got a picture of it later that's a more of a close up because you're seeing a totally different construction method and texturing and mm -hmm. it's like not if this is much more fashion like metal that yes. makes fashion um, exactly because uh, it's got like it's it's got asymmetry it's diagonals and then the gemstones of various sizes encrusted on top of it so it's fun this is definitely much veering away towards the 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 the, the, the squamata armor like fish scale thing that's mm -hmm. happening or mm -hmm. and, and becoming more of a uh, uh a new design element which is really it's fun exactly and the sleeves uh, like you said it comes with the the more um uh, what's the word? The, the more see-through material. Um, yeah. They actually pulled those from the Tokyo Dome uh, outfits. So, like I said, they're they're using elements from the prior outfit to use in their new outfits. So the those sleeves specifically were from uh, the design of their Tokyo Dome outfits, which was the first time that those types of sleeves have been used. I put this there because dormants and textures with the outfits. But yeah, there's there's that picture of the 2017 outfit. And oh boy, <laughs> it starts to get sort of it, now we're veering into a little bit more like it looks more organic. It has more almost like a mm. kind of the scaling you'd see on an alligator or it's got this kind of lizardy texture to it. Uh -huh. um, but like this is where I feel like they start to their costume choices start to go into fantasy. Like all these costumes could be on dark elves, you know, is mm -hmm. what we're starting to get into. And you see that for sure late, like coming later, right? Where it definitely mm -hmm. veers into like it, it looks more like historic costume dramas like coming out of china mm -hmm. and stuff too um but yeah and i these are much more mature looking too right mm -hmm. they're the, where this 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 uh all this detailing the even and are just getting into more mature looking textures um they're mm -hmm. yeah i think it's, it's it's actually and it's much more advanced and difficult co costume construction for sure oh very much so legend s baptism 10 10 which 20 um, opening sequence, which was, in my opinion, the coolest, coolest opening of a baby metal show I have ever seen. So opening sequence, this is supposed to be Sue's birthday as the whole reason for Legend S. Uh, she is supposed to be ascending as a goddess, um, you know, because her hometown was Hiroshima. They actually did this show in Hiroshima at a small arena there. 
And um, this was the first time that they used the moving platform, which a lot of us are familiar with now who are newer fans. Um, first time they used the moving platform. And for this uh, show, they went strictly with a silver and black uh, motif uh, on basically almost everything that they had. Um, the crown, I believe, was used originally in their promotional picture for their limited edition cover of their metal resistance um, picture. Everything yeah, else was completely. have a picture new. later of that too. Yeah. Um, staff, just so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, I mean, you can see that it, 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 at first you look at it and it's just like, oh, okay, that's cool and neat design, but it's actually two X's put together. So that's pretty, I thought that was really, really cool. Um, so that was the main symbol for the, for the show. But they used the outfit and then this happened <laughs> at the very end of the show. Um, so this is how you start the show. And then the next one is how you end it. Exactly. Right? So we're yeah. bookending the show with ritual and elaborate costumes. Mm. Exactly. Um, that first one, the gray one is much more like, uh, it looks more like holy. It's more very mm -hmm. nunnish. <laughs> Mm -hmm. non adjacent um uh it's still, definitely still living in the dark elf territory that i was talking about earlier with sort of right. druidic yeah. yeah definitely and it has that kind of like in the in the mm -hmm. crown the crown kind of looks like finger bones in a way it's both like somewhere between ice crystals and finger bones to me um mm -hmm. yeah you know but it and then the sleeve the shape of the whole garment it, it just feels like a typical like what i'd see in a, a what I think of Chinese costume drama shapes, right? Like mm -hmm. because of the shoulders and stuff. And they did um, use this element too, because this was the uh, introduction to the song called In the Name Of, which wasn't really a song. It was just more of a musical sequence, um, which they used for, um, for their opening sh of their shows from there on out um, for the 2018 tour, which we'll get to in here in a bit. So and this veiling is the same kind of shape as the, is karate like the mm -hmm. non-karate too yeah. these are amazing those are <laughs> really so fun. cool so i mean like it's a really this is a fun like just a really different costume shape than we've seen on them too mm -hmm. right um and then the 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 headdresses are pretty amazing right um mm -hmm. uh in terms of shape scale like impact when they would come on stage with this i would think um they're really fun they look like you know, goddesses. The time that it took from initially being off stage to the time of them coming, her coming back on stage, because Moa comes in later um, down a little little pathway to be able to get their hair down from the pig t from the ponytails or pigtails or whatever to get it all underneath that headdress and getting that headdress to stay on there i just is it's just amazing to me these these feel like very thai to me like if we're looking at influences this is where i this is where i pick this up it seems very like a traditional thai like dance headpiece it's mm -hmm. it's fun to see them branch out to different inspirations it, actually the shape of the whole outfit actually has that vibe too the, mm -hmm. the way that the 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 like this plastron or whatever this piece in the front here and then has the pointed shoulders going up it all uh -huh. very thai to me mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's really fun these are amazing. the chosen seven yes they started their tour in Kansas City, which was a whole entire disaster because nobody announced that Yui, Yui was not going to be there. So a, a lot of people think negatively about these specific outfits. But then as the years have passed since then, a lot of people come back to say, you know what, these costumes were actually pretty damn good. Um, so Kansas City happened and then they bopped around a few places and went to Char uh to North Carolina, Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and so that was the show that I was going to. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do something stupid. I'm gonna make this costume and I'm gonna wear it to the show. So I had, I think less than a week, I think in like five days or something like that to make this. So I went out to the store trying to figure out what kind of material to use, this and that. And I was the first person to actually make this costume <laughs> as a cosplayer. So that included even in Japan. So I'm pretty proud of that one. <laughs> but 
uh, very difficult to make because there's a lot of pieces and parts to this one. Is I mean, basically everything from the 2016 tour on has been very just intricate. With this though, they still have the sleeves from Tokyo Dome, although the uh, the tutus are gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a total shift in silhouette too. It's uh-huh. a much more it's uh it's it's slimmer silhouette right um Mm -hmm. and you have sue in a much longer skirt um she i mean it looks more it's it's definitely a more mature look for sure Mm -hmm. too um it's darker it's more heavy it's more i mean it it's like it it's a it's slightly sinister which i love Mm -hmm. it's what Mm -hmm. i really like about it i mean i think these are the ones that are more more super exciting to me i like the the repeat of the staff is fun and the variation of it and i like the way they use it they come out and like you know there's this whole ritual dance kind of at the beginning right of the yeah i watched um which is fun uh yeah and then the way that these move i think is really exciting too because the Mm -hmm. the way the panels of the skirt move when they dance is really exciting too and then Mm -hmm. the construction of this is fun it's it's much more elegant i think too right Uh, and which is also because it's lacking all the froofy pantsness of the (laughs) the tech tm trademark um of the previous costumes right this definitely just reads uh entirely different in a in a huge yes like we're yeah. there's no red it's all leather with gold accents and then it has like this helmet this is like a kawari kabuto helmet it's like super japanese right? um, <laughs> like, i think it's on the next slide actually yeah. before just before we go to it also the, the the head of the staff of course has the uh the eclipse mm-hmm. the, the, eclipse the symbol of the, yeah. the 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 tour yeah yeah which was part of their, um, they had a comic book that they released um, called uh, Apocrypha, The Legend of Baby Metal. And that was the front mm-hmm. cover for it was this uh, eclipsed yeah. symbol. This was really cool because uh, this picture actually it was because this is the only time that they actually used that makeup um, specifically for Sue and Moa because they just had really kind of basic makeup. Uh, for the outfits and then the two other backup dancers which we have lovingly dubbed the muscle sisters because they're just they're strong looking <laughs> um, they had the black and red well there there was uh, one show in Germany one of the festivals they were just like you know what we're gonna do something fun they're gonna put the Sue and Moa in those in that makeup so they did and that's where this picture came came from was from that show but uh you had the the costume influences with the with the pointed um shoulder i don't want to call them shoulder pads but <laughs> um but it definitely still looks like armor for sure with the protection the side protection and the ads of front protection and still kind of semi going back to the more roman roman look too in my opinion um the head crowns were really cool uh, like i said before Sue's hair was all down. Moa's hair was down. Whereas Sue's hair, hers was all curled up at the top portion. Whereas Moa's had this really intricate braid up at the very top of mm-hmm. her head. Um, so I, still though, with the sleeves, they were still using a past element of one of their outfits, which once again, always thought was really cool. I mean, this like seems like uh I, I, uh, they look like Amazons too in this, mm. you know, is what I think they look yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it seems, I'm pretty sure Wonder Woman came out pretty close <laughs> to this time too, right? Um, uh, but I, I it, think it so. Has, yeah. it, it definitely has that. And I pulled this image of, um, a, like a Chinese, from a Chinese costume drama that, like, I, I mean, I think it's like, oh, you can really see how these are mm. pretty similar styles, right? Mm-hmm. Where this black and gold and then the using selective symbology in the costume, right? Where you've got that eclipse symbol and then uh, it's just, it's fun. And I could easily see this being in like, you know, it could be an elf in Lord of the Rings or I mean- Yeah, a like, little bit. I'm yeah. sure a bunch of people have made this their like Dungeons and Dragons costume for their, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for their elf. It's, it's fun. I like the makeup too is an interesting kind of call to, like I, that looks like makeup that's a traditional makeup look for Chinese opera too right is that okay. look and I also um and also obviously it using that pink red eyeshadow is that's also you see that in geisha makeup too sometimes mm-hmm. so, true but so I like you, it really, it's dramatic for their eyes 
yeah. But there's, there's also a, a kind of goth metal slash punk. Very Susie and the Banshee. Oh yeah, I was gonna say it's Susie Sue for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's the same eyebrow shape, and she would do that deep, um, deep eyeshadow down the side of the nose. Yeah. So it's very Susie. That's fun. Let me go to the next one. Once again, totally going away from traditional baby metal. The hair is all tight and slicked down. Um, hair pulled up in little <coughs> curls in the backside. They have these, uh, although from a distance, we all thought maybe they had their hairs in like braids and sticking up, but it's actually feathers and are like a crown. Uh, every once in a while you had kept bringing up Allie the the distressed look to this outfit definitely shown up on these ones because I mean dark side was supposed to be like you know this is well it's dark it's you know destruction and well distortion was their first single from this whole uh section of of their tour and stuff so and that was about destruction and things so if you've seen the video which I believe there's actually a picture on that mm-hmm. but yeah. um they used like gold ropes and um, like uh, open square netting underneath it. And um, they actually use like a, um, almost like a see-through velvet uh, material as well underneath it under, for like the base of the skirt, which was really cool. Um, and then of course they, did, they still went with the peplum, but it's more uh, couture, I guess. Uh, it's <laughs> got this, this costume has a lot more texture to it and movement than previous costumes, which is fun. Like all mm-hmm. of the hangsy downsies <laughs> that are happening in the skirt, when you get, gets a lot of dynamic movement, when mm-hmm. you, when they spin, when they dance, you've got lots of things bouncing and jumping, has a lot mm-hmm. more energy to it. It's mm-hmm. another like pretty mature look. It definitely has couture influence, which I think I've got some slides of too. It might um, be on the next one. Shape. Yeah. The, the hairstyle is pretty interesting too. It, it, from a distance, it looks like Bantu, Bantu knots, right? Mm-hmm. Like little mm-hmm. knots on top of the Hat. yeah um, there we go yeah it has like feathers and braiding it's fun it's just a different look um it's, it ha- has a sort of post-apocalyptic mad maxi kind of feel totally. as well exactly that's yeah. kind of what they were going for with yeah this. it definitely has that yeah so i pulled these images these are from the 2013 um mcqueen show alexander mcqueen which is like my <laughs> my favorite fashion designers um and i i don't know if these are references that they used i'm just showing you these as like the equivalents in couture, which so in the 2000, 2013 McQueen show, we have at least two elements that are repeated in that you see in the videos, right? We have the cage skirt. You see that there's two elements of cage skirts here in the McQueen images. We also have the studying that's repeated. And then we have this mask, which is used in the um, distortion video. Um, the cage mask. The, also the ruffs and things are all things that we see. So it's kind of like you can see some really interesting echoes in design. Whether this was the inspiration or not, I'm not sure. But this was also a thing happening across multiple couture designers were doing this kind of cage uh, cage stuff. And this is all kind of references to um, Elizabethan era fashion too. Mm-hmm. That's what McQueen did a lot of like mixing Elizabethan and uh, uh, altered um, extreme silhouettes from that era where you're extreme corseting of the body and, and then pushing out the shape of the body with um, undergarments in such a way to, to change the silhouette to an extreme, right? And then he also used like 50s and things and then punk and would mix together in a genius way both mm-hmm. him and then when he died um sarah oh gosh took over and does similar t- took over the house of queen and her work is similar and they're all amazing but let me go mm-hmm. to the next one yeah even looking up close to the uh, up close to the outfits there um from a distance like i said once again you couldn't really tell but when you're up close the the sleeve in and of itself has that alligator pattern material yeah. to it too and the, um, and the collar has like it's almost kind of it's got a bit of a, a armor that you call that a gorget it's like this uh, it's the collar piece in armor that comes up high and then uh-huh. comes down low and protects your collarbone and they've mm-hmm. got that kind of thing happening here again mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. picture shows you the fringy skirts a little bit better like they're like mm-hmm. leather look like they're leather strings hanging um over mm-hmm. uh yeah and i like the central symbol like some sort of embroidered symbol on the the chest which is very much like a uh like heraldry right that you'd see in like um british uh um uniforms and 
not uniforms, the the like the tabards that they'd wear in like right. the, um the coat of arms. Yeah, yeah. And that that's kind of fun. And I, I don't know enough to know I can't tell exactly what that is, but it seems like a symbol that is- Yeah, it's the it's essentially a very exploded version of the of the eclipse sun. Yeah, it's I mean, I love the headdress form. piece too. It's so seeing them with their hair up is new in, in a way that like you get to see their full face. You can see how much they've like grown Matured. into their woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, yeah. They're much mm. more sculpted. They have less of that baby fat about their face. They have more makeup on and you can just see how stunning they are uh, mm-hmm. as, as uh, people. And I'm sure it's way better to dance in, <laughs> frankly, too. Yeah. To your ponytail whipping in your face every, every time. True. You uh, for Metal Galaxy. Well, now they're in the galaxy. And so... Now they have spacesuits. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. I love these. It's like a lace, I love them. a lace over something else. So you get like this overlay, lace over like a silver, it looks like. And mm-hmm. Yeah, and then and then you have lots of um, brocade. This is, we're going back to brocade. Like we saw that in the, Buda, the special Budokan outfits. So mm-hmm. you're getting something that has a lot of tech. So it's like a black on black brocade that has like a lorex in it so it's got a shiny factor to it so you've mm-hmm. got like really lush textured costumes these are very complicated like this very um, complicated uh the peplums have these like pleats and and curves in them it's a uh, it, it, very victorian still too all of these shapes are very like like bustle era kind of shapes did you mm-hmm. see these on evening wear in like the 1880s and even into the 1890s um the 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 shape of the the this like um flange here like this uh this top i mean that's this is all very like straight out of a victorian like party dress kind of stuff mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. um but then you're adding the victorian like hike still being super modest with these with these ladies which is fun mm-hmm. but and then, and then the brooches and the and the neck and the neck piece as well. Um, actually, the the yeah, theming the, um, mm-hmm. with the albums was the sun, which is Sue, and the moon, which is Moa. Um, there were um, photos, promotional photos and stuff that had up closes of their faces and their necks. Which is this is before the reveal of their actual outfits. Um, but the jewels, actually, the jewel for Sue is actually like a deep orange color, mm-hmm. and the one for Moa is like um a eh, kind of like a medium blue uh color so they even even that tiny little details like that still had their their separation of themselves out from each other even though it's obvious with the pigtails and the single one um you're, but you're they still, still had getting that sorry you, you're also still getting that mix of the like the punk stuff with the leather and the lace and the studs mm-hmm. which is really fun too plus then with the victoria and then we're also going back this is much more of like a throwback to the og lo- goth lolita look too right mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. very much fitting in that land again in a way that we haven't in a long time this is a nice like kind of like full circle throwback to the original kind of inspiration mm-hmm. but also I, given that kind of sci-fi twist that those costumes exactly. would not be inappropriate on star trek or... right no right. by no, no means it, it, yeah and i think that's part of that is that shape of this this um this elevate like this flange is for lack of a better word here uh uh the, the way that it comes up to a point it's it's very spacey and it's yeah because it's more of an upward point instead of yeah. a side point like yeah. oh uh, uh what's the dude from Flash Gordon Ming? It's like Ming the Merciless. Oh Ming. yeah, <laughs> gosh, I, I haven't associate with him. I know it from Defenders of the Earth. That's what I know of <laughs> from them. Our little Avengers, they're all so awesome. Um, but what was really cool is that even though they had the same like design outfits, once again they even had little elements that were different from both Sue and Moa's outfits as well. Um, they had a different type of lace overlay on the side peplums um the thing around their waist <laughs> but like stom- um, it's a stomacher you stomacher mean like a yeah on the waist yeah, yeah yeah even that um they used slightly different material in and around that area too uh just as a differentiation and of course they changed their hair as well they have the little space buns on the top with the gem sticking out of it too um i did make this one and this was probably, this is definitely the most difficult one I've, I've done out of all of them. It, I, I think if they continue on in this very elegant and just intricate, I'm probably not going to be able to make another one for a while because 
so many layers and just like the leather and the lace and the thickness of just everything put together was just a lot. But there's a better picture of the uh, Legend S outfit. Uh, for, that was Sue's outfit that she was wearing underneath that, that garment. Um, lots of velvet. Yeah, it's a crushed velvet. And then they look like they have a glitter velvet in there too, which is nice because then that has a lot of luster, which is fun. Um, I really like the kind of like um, uh, geodesic, I guess maybe the shaping that they have throughout mm -hmm. here. Like there's a kind of a thing happening. Looks like this one where she has the silver uh, kitsune mask has some hollow elements to it. Like it has like a holographic fabric that's- being Yeah, the underside of it is, is a yeah, holographic. Yeah, so like there's a lace over the ho like hollow, which then another thing that's just gonna bling out in a performance setting, which is really fun too. Oh yeah, it was always so really pretty just to see because all the lights hitting it and just all the different colors and things. It, it looks very just black, black, white, you know, black, silver, and kind of not bland, but just, you know, very kind of basic. But then when you get them under the lights, it's so flashy and it's, it's really, really pretty. <laughs> I think there's yeah, this more. is another one I pulled to show you that McQueen influence that you see in the distortion video in the, like the, 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 I mean, cause distortion, you don't ever see them. You see, it's just mm -hmm. like a, a prog, a prog. <laughs> a progressive metal band story kind of video right. which is really fun and it has all these characters in it this one in particular this mask is like has to be a reference to this mcqueen mm -hmm. look uh i mean it's pretty like that's the first thing i thought of um mm. if not i mean there were other people that did similar masks it just seems very much that and this mm -hmm. whole that whole video had a very high fashion look to it oh yes mm -hmm. very much so yeah yeah, there. I pulled all these cape pictures because I love a cape. <laughs> I love a cape too. And they, I think that they, and then Sue in particular seems to be really good at work in her cape during her. Uh, it seems like these come out for solo, like the big, like kind of ballad, yes. the power mm -hmm. ballad numbers. Yeah. So, um, and they they add them and they add a lot of drama and fun to them. I think they're. Mm -hmm. really yeah, good. this specifically is used for the song uh, Akatsuki, which yeah. I believe translates to Red Moon. Um, yeah. Uh, so a solo I Sue don't. song, which hasn't been performed in a really long time. Uh, well, yeah, I think it's been a really long time at this point. Um, but yeah, she, well, no, she did perform it at Budokan in yep. 2020. I forgot my bad. Um, but yeah, she specifically wore this, this cape and it was the same cape for a while. And then during the 2018 tour, which is on the left, um, they did actually change it to a black and gold cape. Um, and it was also a bit longer. It let the the um the lace that was on it was gone um so they actually started designing it more towards whatever outfit they were wearing at the time which i believe they did the same thing at the budokan as well um mm -hmm. in in 20, 2020 or no 2021 excuse me i pulled these two as options like more because then there's like there's some that are like more like full poncho capes that cover up mm -hmm. the whole costume mm -hmm. and then um like the, I, I saw silver ones, I saw gold ones, although I wasn't sure it was an actual gold one and it wasn't just a color corrected video. No, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's okay. a gold reflected one. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. fun how I just, I like how both like they, they've all, they're all getting them too, not just Sue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Well, um, this, these ones particular are from, um, it's the song called the one. Yeah. So then this is the time when they just basically just stand there and more do the symbolism thing. So they're not doing a whole lot of activity. Um, they had on the far left, there's that silver one there um, for their initial 2016 tour. They had an all black one um, for Tokyo Dome, which is the far right. And then they went into the capes for the 2019 uh, tour. Because I don't think they ever performed the one during 2018. I mean, like, my mind's a little fuzzy. <laughs> well, I also like the capes. I mean, the capes are nice, like throw, like that. that's something you see in in other metal and rock groups too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like Freddie Mercury would sometimes wear a mm -hmm. cape. I'm pretty sure David Lee Roth sometimes wore a cape. Oh gosh, you know, I mean, yes. Uh, I mean, Bowie, like you go back mm -hmm. to all the glam metal bands, you know, like King Diamond. So, I mean, you'll see that on on people, right? So oh, yeah. it's, a fun, it's a fun kind of like trope, I guess, of the, <laughs> of the genre, right? So lean mm -hmm. into it and it works for them and, and the mythology they've built up too, right? So mm -hmm. more of like an ascension sort of thing. Yeah. These, again, these masks are amazing. Um, and then we have a cape here too, but this is just a promo shot, right? That but, was, um, the big one is a promo shot, yes. Yeah. Um, that was for their 2015 tour, yeah. They just had the black capes because it, it was like the Dark Knight 
the dark night arises or dark night something was like the name of that tour so mm-hmm. that was kind of like a batman take essentially was what they were going for with those promotional um pictures um, but they did go back into using those those headpieces for the 2018 tour for the opening of uh, In the Name of with the staffs mm-hmm. and things. Um, I think and again, the, those masks, again, have that half a samurai kind of looks. Yeah, so like I pulled these. So these are traditional Kawari Kabuto, which translates into strange helmet, basically. <laughs> um, and so these were a samurai would wear these into battle to, I mean, they would like, the point Get was to off. show off. <laughs> and to yeah. scare your enemies before you you could see them coming, right? Um, uh, as a battle maneuver, it's, it might be a strange tactic because they would be very heavy potentially and also mm-hmm. uh, limiting. And then you'd know exactly who to attack as the leader mm-hmm. of the group. Right. But it's the same, I mean, that's, a, that's a been a, a, a classic fail of men in battle for many years. Let's put the fanciest feathers on the guy in charge so we know who to shoot. But these helmets also just became a status thing, right? So like show mm-hmm. off, you know, who's got the fancier car. Um, th- this is the equivalent, right? And their their construction is pretty fascinating. And they usually just had like a standard metal, like, you know, a, a, a thing that would actually protect you, a metal like cup, cat bowl. Mm-hmm. And the, all of these things would go on top of them. And so they were usually, they could be shaped or hammered metal or they could have, um, they often use like a lacquered uh, leather. Um, so that's what you're seeing like in the one in the middle. Then they had uh, often a mask, which was usually called a menpo. And then they had this neck piece, which I cannot remember the name of. And this is all like, that's actually protective. The menpo has a functional means too, because there's no way to keep that helmet on your head unless it's like attached, attached. on the chin. And and to, so that helps balance the whole thing, right? Mm. But they're pretty amazing. Like the, the, I tried to find some that were similar in style. Like I love that this was the closest one I could find that kind of had like the ears part of it, right? Because they mm-hmm. usually were modeled off of something from nature and they had like significance in t- terms of um, meaning and story for the person that was wearing it. It might also, it might also have your mon, your like symbol for your fat, your common or mon for your family or your um, whichever um, daimo you were with or whatever, like you, you would, it would work for your family, uh, say who you were. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I, I just think the shapes that you're seeing here are exact same shapes. We have that whole, like the little ridge, it's kind of, you know, Darth Vader's helmet is one of these. <laughs> A little bit for other people. It's the they same did thing. Use, they have used Star Wars references in the past. So. Yeah, and I think so, I think it's the other way around. The Star, Star Wars, Wars is, is using is, Japanese stuff. Yeah, Star Wars is all Japanese clothing. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is. It, it, so, mm. uh, but this helmet shape is the same that you're seeing in that one. Uh, so yeah, in the Menpo, it's all the same here. Not to mention that silhouette is stunning, and then that the whole the the tall ears. I mean, it's a Kitsune mask again. It's repeating the fox mask. It's just in an extreme kind of form um it also reminds me of like medieval uh catholic uh robes from the like black plague era Mm -hmm. right like which so it has that kind of like that because of the height of it the, the the tall pointiness and the black hoodiness of it it kind of reminds me of too which has a little bit of a sinister look to it when i think about it cool uh next slide i pulled this one too because uh eiko ishioka is my favorite costume designer ever um she's a japanese costume costume designer and like you might know her from she got the oscar for um dracula bram stoker's dracula um but she also designed for she designed a lot of almost all of tarsem's movies so like the cell and the the immortals which is a crazy movie but beautiful (laughs) um and then she did, uh, I think this was the Japanese Olympics. And the, uh, then the last, her last film was like Cinderella that had Julia Roberts in it. But I don't know if these are influences. I just see these in her work too. Um, mm-hmm. Like this, this is the the mask, the red mask on the left. That's the mask from that uh, Vlad the Impaler wore into battle. And it has the similar ears. It's got the, mm-hmm. the, the ridging. I mean, it's all, it just felt like, I, it felt like a callback to me. And I, I, I just, you know, she's someone like as a designer, like she's such a like a a, a force has changed changed the way the costume um, for like high concept type things was done, right? By she really pushed organic um, uh, shapes into design. 
Yeah. So this was the work on the immortals, which I felt like, and then the last one is J, uh, J Lo and the cell. Right. And I thought that this crown shape was kind of similar to the crown shape that we saw on the, um, Sue's, uh, gray, um, Mm-hmm. What was that the met uh the legend s yeah yeah and mm-hmm. then even just this one in the middle kind of looked like the end of that concert those shapes at the end of the concert these mm-hmm. are the two from the immortals i don't know if those are references to those are just the ones that i saw in them mm-hmm. yeah so this is this is the, the last one we've seen of them so far is their um their anniversary outfit which once again took themes from their last outfit and and turn them gold <laughs> for you know their anniversary colors. Um, something that was pointed out to me is a little bit more noticeable in the picture on the left hand side um, is the the shaping of their outfit from the the X with the pointy sleeves and then their peplums on the side. It kind of makes it into the shape of an X, which mm-hmm. X is ten. So and that's the tenth anniversary. I thought that was like. As being a, as being someone who's interested in costuming and stuff, the fact that I didn't notice that and somebody else did really kind of irks me. <laughs> but uh, I was just like, oh, that is just really cool because it's so so very subtle, but it's so very obvious because the peplums are actually um, a bit stiffer than the other other set of peplums were uh, for their outfits. But now um, Moa's got sleeves again. Um, slightly different from Sue's, but she's got sleeves now, which is really cool. Uh, and still using the the um, the silky uh, short sleeves from Tokyo Dome, so they still have those elements as well. And then, of course, all the elements from their Metal Galaxy outfits too. Uh, they're so pretty. It's yeah, these so look very like pretty. it's the same. It's the same shape from Metal Galaxy, but it's a different material because this mm-hmm. is like a hollow. Um, a, 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 it looks like a foil, ho, holographic foil on top mm. of a, a fabric. Um, it in a, it gives know, it a sort of, it, it looks almost like stained glass, doesn't it, on the right? It a gives little it that bit, sort yeah. of Tiffany lamp kind of look. Yeah, it's got, it's, it's, I mean, using holographic stuff like that looks, it's great because it'll take on so many different colors when light hits it. And so you can mm. really shift the, do shift, shift it. Um, and it just, you know, it's not, like the it's really hateful to sew but it looks great and i love this yes it is (laughs) the repetition and the collars is fun i mean another it's very still space that spacey thing you know it's it's Mm. it's it's great i love the i really like the 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 new hair on sue to this this top knot with the spikes sticking out of it i think is really fun Mm -hmm. it's just because it's basically it's like a rubber band, but they're like a huge thick rubber band with the diamonds that are attached to it. I, I've still not really figured out exactly how they've done it. Um, Cause those are like Swarovski crystals and stuff and they're kind of thick, but it's, and it's slightly heavy, but it's still like, how in the world did they manage that? Because especially with the, the, uh, the Avengers themselves, cause they had the little, the little knots on the top, um, their diamond pieces were actually sticking through their knots. So that means they had to have something attached underneath their buns to be able to have done that. And it just, I don't know. Magic. Some of the things it's just kind of like, it's really cool to try to figure out the magic in behind the costuming, you know? Lady Bones, Baby Bones, more their technical back, backup da- dancers um, from their prior days. Um, they did sort of kind of use Baby Bones again during their Budokan show in uh, 2021. Um, although they ended up being like the smaller children of, although we don't really know who, but they were smaller children. Whereas these are professional dancers from a dance group. Um and then every every blue moon, you'll see someone dressed up in on um, the right hand side in the bones outfit. Um, there was actually one that came out during Legend Metal Galaxy to help us all bow down during Headbanger because that's what you kind of do. Yeah, that's, these are like a, hype. I think of them. These are like hype, like the hype men of for yeah. like a rap group, right? Essentially, they kind of like come out. But what I put they this are. slide in here because I think it's fun, easy things you could dress like to go to a sh- I mean this is a pretty easy like do oh, yeah. for a costume person like someone who's not skilled at doing costumes you could easily do this but oh, it's yeah. fun this is like I, I yeah I just think it's kind of a it's it was an easy th- this as a choice was an easy way to add some excitement and dyna- dynamic movement uh in a, a visual in a stage show so it makes sense mm-hmm. it, it almost strikes me as odd that the 
the bones are so anatomically incorrect. Oh, so, like, it's like make my eye twitch. To look. Why, why have you got two thigh bones, <laughs> but only one fibula, right? It's like, <laughs> Maybe What's from the, the galaxy that two <laughs> metal and Moa metal and the, they yeah. don't have the same bones. Yeah. Possibly. We have, yes. We have multiple famous. Lore. <laughs> it's all lore. Yes. Um so, uh, I feel, uh, so like the the Kami band costumes, I Kami. think or sorry, well Kami means it's God. Fine. And yeah. um uh like these costumes are fun, really fun for me. I think like I, they're basically um i like that they've at, they have a bunch of distressing on them which you really can't see from a distance um but like go if you go to the next slide i think i have a picture so like when i first saw them i thought oh this is clearly a reference to yurei which are a type a type of japanese ghosts right like they mm -hmm. see Although yurei are usually women only um almost all of them are all of the images you see are go women but they have they always are almost always depicted with long tangled black hair um uh they're usually in white um they're often uh have flames about them they usually are floating they don't have feet always sometimes mm -hmm. they have scary features right and you'll see this a lot in japanese horror films like uh what's her name samara that comes out of the well in ringu right oh, like that ring yeah yeah she's she is a, a yure like right so like when mm -hmm. i saw their band outfit i'm like oh this is that has to be what well, this threat is a reference mm -hmm. to, right oh yeah the other reference that I see is buto is like, which is a type of um, ja avant-garde Japanese dance, um, which is, I don't know if Andrew, have you ever seen buto before? Mm -mm, can't say I have. I, I've seen it, but I don't know much about it. Yeah, I, I, I've only, I've seen it like one time. Yeah, I mean, it's very strange. I mean, it's a, it's a dance. I mean, I think it's, it's amazing. And the skill that it takes to do it is crazy. <laughs> like the, but um, it's uh it's a like, it, it often has movements about like infirmity and age and it's looks on it's it can be uncomfortable to watch and i'm sure it's uncomfortable to do um it, it often is performed wearing white makeup and white clothing or almost no clothing right so you can really see the the actor's body their dancer's body right but um it just that it also made me think that was the, the next thing i thought of i thought mm -hmm. of the yure and i thought of the buto dancers right mm -hmm. um just in the the nature the shape the the face painting the mouth expressions that you sometimes see them the band do and then the hair and and or the lack of hair on what uh what is named buo oh. Bo. yeah oh. on Bo. <laughs> yeah i think he's on the next slide yes yeah i so then i then kabuki was the next thing was the makeup style which we see both repeated in the kind of the kitsune mask and then we also see um Bo put it on he has variations of paint on the side of his head at different times which looks like they're airbrushing it with a stencil and then adding some stuff on top of it mm -hmm. but it's interesting it definitely makes me think of different kabuki characters um that you'll see uh, mm -hmm. on stage, especially the white and then the with the shadows around the eyes the emphasis on the lips and then you see them doing those kind of expressions that are pretty typical of kabuki performers right yeah i think there's a lot of kabuki in in the attitude to the kami band i think it's part of the reason mm -hmm. we don't see them very much mm -hmm. that, that the, the you know the the sense of the girls as the actors being stage front and the band being at the back is, is a very kabuki idea so is that that walkway that you were talking about at tokyo dome you know that this is straight out of kabuki theater so is the revolve mm -hmm. on the stage and then and all the, the band yeah the band was directly in the center they mo never moved mm -hmm. any i mean there was one point where they did come out for a moment to do like a, a performance, but then they went right back into the middle. So uh, next slide. Yeah, uh, this, when was this, when did they switch to this? This is uh, for 2018 for the uh, Chosen Seven tours. Yeah, so that this is when they switched to the dark elf look too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, so like this exactly. makes perfect sense. This is like, I pulled these pictures of these are Russian orthodox robes which like as soon as i saw these i was like well that's obvious mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what that is right i've used this costume image many times anytime i have to do like some sort of like 
like weird monk character and something, I will do a variation. I won't use these symbols because those symbols mean something. <laughs> it's right. Do a different, you know, so then they've done the similar thing. They have taken this kind of same shape of this uh, Russian Orthodox um, robe and then, and redone it with symbols that are, are more intentional, not just copying this, right? So mm -hmm. you, you're seeing that as eclipse symbol again in the center. And then I'd have to get up close to see what the other things are. I don't see any kanji on there it all looks no like it's all symbols not not yeah, so not characters you know so there actually are characters so what they did was they overlapped uh they took one thing and then they overlapped it with the other side to make it look like a specific letter um so it all actually does say stuff you just have to really oh and, i'd have to like, get up think, close because i can't yeah on any pictures. um it's really hard and i think i think the outer layer of it actually just repeatedly says baby metal death i'm pretty sure um, which is a repetitive thing that you'll see a lot in their, in their shows and, and on their outfits or on merch or whatever was, is, is something along the lines of baby metal death. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those, those, the little things do actually, it does actually say something. Like so where in the, in the, I'm not saying kanji. Yeah. That's there is no kanji. There is no kanji whatsoever. Oh, okay. It's oh, all like, okay. it's all in English okay. essentially. Oh. Um, it's a it's a cool look and it makes sense it fits in with the other look because the other the all the white look has also has kind of a uh what a supplicant look about it right mm -hmm. I, I it's got that kind of i'm a servant um i'd also because it's white it also says deity to me and then also has that ghost element too this one is much more like i will uh, this takes gives the band more authority i think visually on stage <laughs> right um it definitely makes them more act um more as opposed to supplicants now they've upgraded to acolytes if that makes sense yeah <laughs> right? moving up this yeah. like mm -hmm. liturgical mm -hmm. ladder of nonsense <laughs> right but um uh it i don't know i think it's really it's pretty it's pretty sweet like i'm gonna i i know i'll be using this as a costume reference in the future for some yeah you know? it's pretty so. cool and actually something cool they did was they used that as the um as a gift there was three gifts that you got at legend desk because it was a special show uh you got the face mask you got this little, oh, basically they gave you a copy of that, like but a, a shorter version a as, no, like it was a robe. Oh, wow. Well, not a full one, but it would like came slightly down to your waist. Um, but you pulled it over your head and you had a necklace as well. that had the, nice. the XX symbol on it. And you were required to wear that for the show. <laughs> it would be a sweet hoodie. It should, I mean, they could it, just make it. Well, they did, um, they did release what's called a distressed hoodie, which is like a super extra large one that has a lot of that symbolism and stuff. And it looks like it. These guys are the, this is the West version, which are a bunch of the dudes from the, the, the star Wars band, right? Galactic uh, Galactic empire. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I refer to these as the death eater version of the comedy mm -hmm. band, right? It's like, cause they <laughs> look very much like those death eater masks, but they also look like their masks from galactic empire, which are all like variations of like star Wars masks. So I feel like it's like they kind of had a compromise with the, when they negotiated with these bros to be in the band, they're like, well, well, you have to do one part, the Japanese Kami band, and then we'll let you have one part of yours. But I don't know that for a fact. It just seems. Yeah. Does the the Japanese Kami band ever wear these masks? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I they do. Sure. I could only find pictures of from the, like what, when I saw pictures, it all said that this was like, these were the West version, not the. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. I mean, we see like another variation of like, it's another liturgical garment is this robe is like, is this sort of like a monk, a kind of faux monk outfit. Another, mm -hmm. another. So we, we're keeping them firmly in that like tunic land of, it has like everything that I'd think of as like liturgical garments, meaning like mm -hmm. it has like this central motif going down the middle. Um, uh, the black is common, you know, it looks like, like th there's a mix of shiny and matte materials mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. still all functional to to to, to play in for in. sure oh yeah it's all been comfortable like light cotton easy to sweat just, in it's all yeah, good and, they're, and they can throw it in the wash when they're done with the show oh yeah they probably all reek <laughs> <laughs> yeah after i don't even want to know what these two hours like. <laughs> oh well i i think they have like an under like a an underlay to them too which would I thought, well, a lot of us are like, we really don't want them to have to wear the masks, mm. 
We like to be able to see their faces. Yeah, I'd, and rather, plus, see them. Yeah, I'd rather see them myself too. Um, but knowing okay. that they've got that mask on and they're walking out. And once again, I think about the theater thing where they're like, they have to be burning up and uncomfortable under those things. And it's hard to see too. But so. practically speaking, they can put anybody in these and it, then they don't have to answer questions about who's in the band, right? Like, True. so especially well, if they had Americans in the band the first time, right? During the show, mm -hmm. then you like. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so. But it's, it, you know, I mean, I don't know. There's just something to be said. There's a lot of recording artists and musicians that like a bit of anonymity to their mm -hmm. look and that Ghost mystique that that brings, them. right? So. And again, it's that that's that kabuki side as well, right? The uh, the musicians sort of behind a screen off, you know, because they're not supposed to be the main focus of attention. The mm -hmm. Sue and Mo are the main focus. So I think yeah, that's a, exactly. a conscious choice. I, I, I personally would like oh, to yeah, see Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's a conscious show. choice. I'm sure. <laughs> this uh, ma this mask makes me think of um, Come On, Feel the Noise mask, though. <laughs> uh, quiet yeah. Riot. It's totally a Quiet Riot mask. <laughs> yeah, now you mentioned it. Yeah, it's it does, doesn't cheese, it? <laughs> it's like a cheese metal reference, <laughs> but I'll, I'll take it. Well, awesome. Right. Well, I think we went through the history. We I think have we're, gone we're through up the to history. The current. So um, I, I I don't know if you have final thoughts or um, anything you want to add before we wrap. Um, for myself, I just look forward to kind of seeing how what elements of if it at all because you know they've they've gone through their ten years they've you know they're currently in lore speak they are quote sealed yeah. taking a break um sort of kind of um so i'm curious to see what they'll come up with as far i mean there's a whole lot of different things obviously whether they'll go in a different direction from their past 10 years if they'll still go in the same way um obviously this would mean something different in their costuming too will they pull elements of their old stuff out or will they come up with something completely new um that's what i'm looking forward to pastels as as pastels <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know i would like to see them go back to the black and black and uh, black and red myself i would i now you have just inspired me i'm gonna go start drawing some metal pastel because i feel like <laughs> that is the co-op <laughs> movement we have not seen yet that oh boy <laughs> I feel like let me just emphasize that was a joke. No, it's, <laughs> it's not something I want to see. <laughs> uh, not on them. I don't know if I want to yeah. see it on them, but uh yeah, yeah, I mean I uh I I look forward to seeing what else if they continue down in this um I, I'm I'm all for the loss of the tutu. I'm sure everyone's gonna come at me um <laughs> for that, right? I mean it's fun, but I feel like I there's so much like more interest and sophistication and some mm. of the, the later stuff that makes mm -hmm. I think makes for a better stage show frankly like just mm -hmm. looks like it just you know what the 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 last like the 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 stuff from like 2018 on just feels epic in a way mm -hmm. that matches yeah. the tone of the music yeah. whereas uh and it, it's it's much easier not that this matters but it's easier to convince people to take them seriously when you show them distortion or you show them right like the, as opposed to the the earlier stuff which i love too but mm -hmm. like it's a harder sell i think for um uh uh metal yeah. bands. not that like although that that's also giving that's horrible in the same way like they should be respected for their artistry and their like epic voices and their amazing dance moves and all that mm -hmm. stuff so but they're also older now right they're, yeah they're, right, exactly that too they're not children they're more mature and it was also yeah. eight like so that stuff is was totally age appropriate and that mm -hmm. was i was exactly that. i i so appreciate that about the way that they have always presented and evolved and and i know that that can't all be them themselves like they're they're managers and overlords of all of these groups yes. right? They're like that <laughs> there is i mean if it's anything like korean idol groups i don't know how the idol scene is in japan as much like they're so over like you know controlled right so um like even in like what they wear when they go out on the street, right, is, is managed, right? So I assume mm -hmm. there's a certain level of that. But like, I feel like they've always been really consistent in messaging and like always age appropriate. And I never feel icky <laughs> looking at them. They're never sexualized in a way that I feel is inappropriate, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, if that, if they were an American band, mm -hmm. that would not 
be the case, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no. So I love that um, about mm-hmm. them. And, um, so I look forward to seeing what they, the, as they continue to uh, um, grow uh, and, and I, I hope they keep pushing, pushing these like more mature looks. I love that dark metal elf fantasy look. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I also look forward, I hope there are more like heavy concept videos like Distortion too. Although I wish they were in that video. I wish they yeah. were the ones in that video that were fighting the dragon and all that stuff because I feel like it, I don't see a bunch of fashion models in their videos. No. I'd rather see them doing that stuff. Yeah, than telling exactly. That sweet, sweet video though, but um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we have a lot. I have a lot to work with, so, <laughs> so yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. So uh, yeah. thank you again. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys sharing your time and your expertise. Mm-hmm. And no um, hopefully, we'll we'll talk again soon.